Here I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide to using the index match lookup formula in Excel. And by the end of the tutorial, you'll never want to use VLOOKUP again. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Now the reason you want to use index and match instead of VLOOKUP is because index and match combined create lookups that can go left, right, up and down as easy as anything, whereas VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP are a lot more restrictive. Now the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you have your data set up correctly. Over here I've got a table of data, and the most important thing is that each column has the same number of rows. That might not seem like a big deal right now, but you'll understand as we get into the examples why that's important. Now, index and match are two separate functions that are combined in order to create a lookup formula. So I'm first going to explain them separately, and then we'll combine them for the examples. Index is what actually allows you to retrieve data from a table. So let's look at it. Equals index, open parentheses, now there's two different setups for this function. It may seem confusing, but we go with the top one here, the array argument, row number argument, and column number argument. The first argument is the array argument. This is the table of data from which we will return something. So let's say that I want to return the sales numbers. I simply select the sales number column for the array argument. Then comma, and the next argument is the row number. That means which row in the array should I go to to return a value? Should I go to row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, etc., etc.? Let's say that I want to return a value from row 2. I put a 2 for the row number argument. And since this is a single column array, there's no need for the column number argument. It's just one column anyway. So I can close the parentheses, hit Enter, and we should get 11,012. Now, if I wanted to get the first value, I replace the row number with a 1, and we get 13,095, and so on. Now, if you make the array argument larger than one column, let's say we do sales and manufacturer, then you have to enter not only the row number argument, but also the column number argument. So let's say we want to go down 2 and to the right 1, we enter a 2 for the row number, and then comma 2 for the column number, because we're going down to the second row, and we're going over to the second column, and that should return x, y, z. Now this seems like it does everything that we need, so why do we need match? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to replace these hard-coded values for row number and column number with the match function. Now, the match function is what tells us which row and which column to use. So the match function is actually what works kind of like a VLOOKUP in concept. So we do equals, match, open parentheses, and the very first thing is the lookup value, so the value that we want to find. Let's say that we were looking up for a specific part number over here, say ASC4. We would type that in here just like for the VLOOKUP. Quotation mark, ASC4, close quote, comma, and the lookup array. Where are we going to look for this value? Well, we're going to look for it in the part column. And what the match function is going to do is to return the relative position of the value ASC-4. The relative position meaning, in this column, right here, ASC-7 would be 1, because it's in the very first row of this selection. This would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So the relative position within the lookup array. Now the final argument is match type. We can do less than, exact match, or greater than. Usually you're going to want to go with exact match, but later in the tutorial I'll show you how you can use less than for some of the index match formulas. So 0 for exact match. That means it will exactly match the lookup value. Close parentheses. And we have 3 
because in our lookup array, ASC-4 is the third row down. Match can also work horizontally. So it doesn't just have to work going up and down like this. We could do a match that will go left to right equals match. Look up value. Let's say we want to do it for these alt parts over here. Let's say I want to do alt part two. Look up array. These values here. Match type zero for exact match. And it should return a two. So remember, the match function returns the relative position. So the lookup array is going to have only one row or one column, and the match function will tell you how far from the left or how far from the top the value that it finds is. So alt part two is two from the left. This is the very first cell on the left, second cell, third cell. Alt part two is in the second cell. So it returns a two. And that's how you can use the match function for the row number and the column number argument for the index function. You can use just the row number, just the column number, or both of them together to make really powerful lookup formulas. Now that can seem rather confusing at this point. So let's go ahead and dig into some of the examples and it should be a little easier to understand after that. For the first example, let's start off with a very basic vertical lookup here. Equals index, open parentheses. Now for the array, what value do we want to return? Let's get the sales number for a particular part. So we select sales, comma. Now which row do we want to get? Well, it's for a particular part. So we need to find out which row that part is. So we use the match function, open parentheses. Let's go ahead and get, let's say, ASC-4. So for our lookup value, we do quotation mark, ASC-4, close quote. Remember, for lookup values, just like for the VLOOKUP, you need quotation marks around text. You don't need it around individual numbers. So ASC-4 with quotation marks, comma, the lookup array. That's going to be the part number column. And here we have a very interesting thing you have to take note of. These two tables, these two arrays right here, have to be exactly the same height. If you don't have it the same height, you're going to get the wrong result. Because remember, the match function will tell you how many rows from the top it found the value. And then it's going to return that. In this case, it'll find out ASC-4 is in row 3. Then it's going to return that to the index function and say return the value from row 3. So over here it's going to go 1, 2, 3 to return 9, 5, 5, 8. If you had this over here, just 1 up, it wouldn't work, or 1 down. So make sure it's the exact same size. For match type, we're going to do 0 for exact match. Close parentheses. We don't need a column number for this one close parentheses, and we get 9558. So you can see here, if I just replaced this with a 3, we'd get the same result. So we're just using the match function to tell us how many rows to go down, and that's it. Now let's do a horizontal lookup, equals, index, open parentheses. Now what values do we want to return? Let's go ahead and get the alt part, the alternative part, here for one of these parts over here. So I'm going to keep it very simple and let's say we're going to figure out which alternative part we want for ASC-7. So I'm going to select this table right here, just these three cells. And now the next thing we need is a match function to tell us from which column to return a value column one, two, or three. So going back to the index function over here, we type a comma, and the next argument is actually for the row number instead of the column number. Now we can do one of a few things here. If it's easier for you to remember this, you can just input a one, or you can just leave it blank by typing another comma, and then entering the column number argument. Or, instead of doing any of that, 
we can put the match function here that we'd put for the column number argument. Now that may sound a little bit confusing, but the point is put a one here, put nothing here and just type in a comma, or just go with a match function that we're going to put in anyway. So match open parentheses. What's the lookup value? Let's get it from alt part two. Comma lookup array right here. Match type zero for exact. Close parentheses. And remember, even though it says we're at the row number argument, don't worry about that. We don't need to put anything in for the column number. Just leave it like it is. Close parentheses. And we should get CRC-9. Now, just to show you what I meant over here, since we put this in for the row number argument, and just mentally that can seem confusing, or it may be confusing for other people who look at your work later on and think, this only goes left to right, it's horizontal. Why did they put that in there for the row number? If you want to make it easier on yourself, put a 1 in there, comma, and then put this in for the column number argument. It's going to return the same value. Or you can take out the 1 and leave it blank. Same thing. So in this example, what we want to do is get something from H2 to J2 right over here. And we need to figure out which column to use. So we use the match function here. And we search for alt part 2 up here. And just like in the vertical lookup, we had to make sure that the size up and down was the same, the same number of rows in each selection. Here we need to make sure the same number of columns are present in each selection. Otherwise, it's going to return an incorrect result. So in the match function, we've got three columns. And in the index function, we've got three columns. Now that you've got those two examples down, let's combine both of them to make a two-way lookup. And you'll see this is a lot more intuitive than a two-way lookup with VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP. So we go equals index. Now, this is the one part that does change a bit. This time, instead of selecting one column or one row of data, we want to select multiple rows and multiple columns because we're going to have a multi-dimensional lookup so we can get data from a row and a column. Let's say we want to get data from the alt part section over here. So I'm going to select all of the alt part values. Now I just need to know from which row to get the data as well as which column. So comma for the row number, we use our match function, open parentheses, I want to use the part here to figure things out. And I'm just going to hard code all the values in here to keep it simple. So let's say lookup value of ASC-4, close quote, comma, lookup array, part right here, comma, match type, exact, close parentheses. Now we're back in the index function. So comma, let's go to the column number argument. We need another match function. Open parentheses, lookup value. Let's go for alt part two. And notice that this is not case sensitive, so I don't have to capitalize the A and the P here. Close quote, comma, lookup array. This time it's horizontal. Alt part one, two, and three. Comma, match type, zero for exact. Close parentheses to get out of the match. Close parentheses for the index function. And before we hit enter, notice that this here has just as many rows as our array table from which we will return values. And this here has just as many columns. Very important to keep that straight. Now let's hit enter. And we get CRC6. So ASC4, alternate part number 2, CRC6. Now this may seem a little confusing, but it shouldn't be too difficult by this point. The only thing different that we really did is to make our array for the index function larger, so multiple rows and multiple columns. And we needed to do that to be able to return a value that goes left to right as well as up and down. So we have a multi-row, multi-column table array here. We need to figure out where to get the values. So for the row number, we use a match function. Then for the column number, we use another match function that tells us from which column we are going to get the value. So two match functions, one index function, combined to create pretty much the most versatile lookup formula in Excel. It can go left, right, up, down, all around.
I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.